had a question recently regarding the ATS 20 plus receivers and it was along the lines of do I really need to upgrade the firmware on my radio and as you'll know I've done a video I've done a number of videos on the ATS 20 plus but the most recent one regarding firmware upgrades is when I upgraded my radio to the Goshante uh, firmware which I think is is the best version out there at the moment for the ATS 20 plus of course you don't have to upgrade your ATS 20 plus it will work out of the box but I just thought I'd go through a few of the reasons why it's worthwhile considering upgrading the firmware you can see I've got two ATS 20s here or two ATS 20 pluses I'm just going to switch them on and uh, that one on first and that's the upgraded version we'll just turn the volume down because we don't want that that's got the Goshanti uh, firmware upgrade we'll turn on the other one and this is as it came out of the box okay so we'll look at take a closer look at that in a moment just let it was a bit slower to boot up too you'll notice but that's a minor thing. I will turn the volume down on that so that we don't get the hissing because well, there isn't an antenna on this one. Let's first look at uh, this original one. Now, all of these ATS 20 pluses seem to ship with this firmware. I think it's version 1.5, okay, which is quite an old version anyway now. It's been out for a number of years, but they all seem to ship with this. You'll see the display is small. I mean, I can read it okay without any uh, glasses or anything, but it has got a small display. You've got the frequency there, the AGC status, uh, bandwidth, and uh, kind of an S meter there as well. Okay, if we look at the uh, Gauchante, frequency readout's a little bit clearer, quite a lot clearer, I would say. Um, you know the uh, the numerals are bigger we've got the same kind of information we've got the bandwidth there 4k uh, we've got 5k step set at the moment and so on if we were to press um, I think it's a long press on the step button here on the go shanty okay we've now got I'll just extend this I've got a whip on this and extend it a little bit so can you see we've got an S meter at the bottom there okay a relative S meter it's just got two um, two increments there at the moment because I'm just I've just got a telescopic in the back of it so you get that little S meter and you get a clearer display okay so that's the first thing perhaps the most obvious thing in uh, when, when you come to upgrade so the appearance is better I think the display is easier to read now you need to remember that although we upgrade the firmware it's not going to improve the performance of the radio. The performance of the radio is limited by the hardware inside, and obviously the hardware inside is identical in both of these. What the Goshanti firmware also does, in my opinion, is it reduces the, the noise you get when you step up and down. You get this, this soft muting, this chuffing. It's less obvious on this radio with a firmware upgrade. Okay, but maybe that's a minor thing maybe not here's quite a what i think is quite a major thing the original firmware that these radios ship with the radio is split into bands and those bands are hard and fast in other words you can't tune outside of those bands so you don't get quite full coverage of the hf spectrum i'll give you an example i like to listen to the pirate broadcasters on shortwave and in europe a lot of them are in the region between, let's say, 6.2, 6,200 kilohertz and 6,400 kilohertz. Now, if I wanted to listen to those on this original ATS 20 plus, I've got a problem. I'll show you why. You can see we're on 6290 kilohertz here. Let's say I want to go to 6325. It's a very well-known pirate in uh, UK, Weekend Music Radio. They're on 6325 on the weekends, right? So let's turn up the 6325, we're on 6290. So we go up in 5 kilohertz steps, we're on 6300 there. Uh, we've gone back down to 5.5. We can't get above 6.3. The band, the 49 meter band in this radio 
in the um, firmware that's in it is set to 5.5 okay at the low end and 6.3 at the high end if we go up a band I just press the band button it takes us up to uh, 40 meters where we'll find the um, armature bands 40 meter um, ham band again can we get down to 6325 that way well let's go down we can get right down so we have to do it that way and tune right down okay so that's it's a minor thing we can get to the frequency we want but we can't get it without switching bands and tun tuning right down to okay the bottom of the band now let's have a look at the go shanty 6290 and we can just step up to 6325 and we can keep going we can keep going all the way up to the 40 meter band or we can switch bands just by touching the band plus button and we can cycle through the bands all right with our tuning control even up to the fm band there all right so so we've got long wave there medium wave <clears throat> and we can go through the short wave bands so i think that's an easier method of tuning it's a lot more convenient it just works easier it's more natural when we're talking about tuning as well one of the things with the upgraded firmware is when we come to tune the armature bands i'm going to step down to um 40 meters okay now i'm in five kilohertz steps you know if i was tuning an ssb signal i need the steps to be a lot finer let's see what we've got We've got five kilohertz, one, one megahertz, hundred kilohertz, fifty, ten, nine, five. Okay, and go down to one kilohertz steps. That's in AM mode. Let's change the mode. Let's go to lower sideband. It's what we need for forty meters. Let's press the step button again. Now we've got. Five one five hundred ten. Let's go with that. That okay, we're in ten hertz. That's ten hertz, not ten not ten megahertz or ten kilohertz, ten hertz. Okay, let's go up twenty five. It's probably the most appropriate one would be a hundred. Okay, you see we can step down in 100 hertz to tune our SSB signals, all right? But we can always, um, if we want to get that back on an even frequency, go back to 25 there. Okay, and then if we go back up to 100. Okay, so... That way we can resolve SSB signals quite easily with that 100 hertz tuning mode. Let's try sideband on the original model. Let's see how that goes. So let's put it into a sideband mode. I'll go up to, um, I need to go band down. Remember we, we were on 40 meters and we had to tune right down. So I've got to take it right back up now. Obviously I could alter the step. To make it quicker let's do that um let's go in 10 kilohertz i think that's the highest we've got on this one isn't it 10 yeah let's go to 10 10 kilohertz steps let's get back up to 40 meters so on the 40 meter band okay so just look at the steps that we've got with the um the original firmware we've got one kilohertz We've got one, five, and ten, and that's it. One, five, and ten. We're in AM mode again, so let's switch to SSB mode. Okay, you can see we're in SSB mode now. What steps have we got? One, five, and ten. So you can see straight away 
this is going to be more difficult to tune on SSB. We've only got that minimum one kilohertz steps. Okay, our signals are not necessarily going to be on an even kilohertz. So then what we have to do is we have to push the tuning knob in and we have to, as if you can see there, we have to adjust the beat frequency oscillator, the BFO. We're subtracting 300 uh, hertz there from our 7140. We can cycle up. That's zero. And we have to step up and down like that on the BFO. Okay, when we finish with that, we can press it. Um, it's an extra action. You have to tune this BFO. You don't get the direct frequency readout on sideband because you've got 7148 there if we want to move in smaller steps we have to engage that BFO so the sideband tuning is more difficult we don't have to mess around with a BFO on this remember all we had to do was just adjust our step and then we could tune up and down and we've got the direct frequency readout so it's a lot better for single sideband okay We've already said we've got an S meter on this. We've got an S meter reading. I'll just put this back into uh, AM mode. Okay, so the BFO disappears. You see, it just says S1 there. I don't know what the 80% is. That's our S meter reading. It's it's kind of, it's odd. I don't really know um, how it's calibrated or anything. I find... Although it's limited, the S meter on this one's a lot better. The other thing which is most useful with this, because you'll see that with a Gauchante firmware, I'll just put this back in AM mode, there's a little bit more to it than meets the eye. If we press the band down button, we've got a, a menu here, okay, which we can step through and uh, alter there is a set of instructions online for this firmware it'll guide you through the menu settings it'll guide you through the operation of the radio with this firmware on it and it's very useful you can look at it on screen you can print it out but it's quite a comprehensive guide to the Goshante. when you get one of these uh, order. I mean, all of mine have come from China Direct, AliExpress. They come in a plain cardboard box. You get a um, telescopic whip and a USB lead, and that's it. There are no instructions whatsoever for the use of this particular firmware that come with the radio. I think you can find them online. If you go to GitHub and find the, the sketch for this firmware, but they don't come with any instructions. And as I've just shown you, the um, sideband tuning, okay, is a once you know how to do it, it's easy enough, but it's a little convoluted to engage the BFO and tune it up and down like that. So for ease of use, it's definitely got to be this, if only for the fact that the Gauchante comes with, as I say, a set of instructions on how to use it, okay? And that is useful. Now, what are the downsides? Well, in order to upgrade it, you've got to go through the process. I've got a video that will link you into how to upgrade one of these radios. There's, there's many other videos on YouTube as well. But I've done one where I um, upgraded this to the Gauchante. I'll show you what you need and what you need to do. You'll notice on the back of the radios, you've got two USBs. The Type-C is for your charging. When it comes to flashing any new firmware, is that USB download uh, socket, which is um, is that a micro or a mini connector? But it, it's a different USB connector. There, okay. It's the, it's the older version, isn't it? Okay, you'll need to use that to flash your firmware. It should be a relatively straightforward process if you follow the video. What some people have found, unfortunately, and this is down to quality control of these radios, is that for whatever reason. Their ATS20 Plus has failed to flash, and generally it's a problem with this connector. There's some issues with the way it's been wired inside, and they cannot get it to update at all. Um, 
most people seem to be able to flash them without a problem. Um, there's obviously also a slight risk of bricking your radio. Uh, generally, I find that um, if you're following the firmware upgrade procedure and you give the radio time, you don't touch it or pull out the bleed or anything while the update's taking place, you should be fine. Uh, many years, well, not many years ago, but a few years ago, I managed to brick one because I thought it had finished updating. I pulled out the USB plug. It hadn't finished the update and the radio was, you couldn't do anything with it. It was totally bricked, so please don't do that. Um, but what's likely to happen is um, if you get any problems, the radio just won't update. You'll still you'll still have a functioning radio on the original uh, firmware, but it just won't update. So I would encourage you to um, to update the firmware with a Goshante firmware. It makes the radio a lot nicer to use, a lot easier to use, but it's not essential. If you stick with the original firmware, the radio will work. The performance will be the same. It's just the appearance and the ease of use isn't quite as good. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, thanks for watching.